This exercise is designed to bring together everything you've learnt till now so that you can create this detail. I'm not going to show you exactly how to create this detail, but I'm going to give you a hint at what tools and commands I've used to draw it. If you're having trouble following my movie, you really need to go back to the earlier chapters in the Vectorworks Essentials Tutorial Manual and refresh your memory on the tools and commands that I'm using. I'm going to start with a blank file. I've already set up the scale at 1 to 10 and I'm going to create my footing. So that's the start. So this is my first object here which is 100 millimeters. So there's another part of my footing and then I need a piece of concrete here as well. So these three parts don't look like they're much but don't forget you can always add them together to create what you want. I do need to chamfer this off at 45 degrees so I'm just going to give myself a guideline to help out. Move that along and then hide the end of that. This object needs to have a hatch in it. So let's put in a hatch that looks like concrete. Now it's time for my block work in here. Now my block work is made out of several parts. There's this little part here which is just small and it's about 10 millimeters high and it's going to have a color which is a dark gray. Above that there's going to be another piece of concrete and this is going to have a hatch on it. Both of those need to be mirrored. I can use my mirror tool for that. and a piece of concrete in between those two. So that's got a hatch with concrete. If I select all of those parts I can duplicate them. I need to have about three pieces here so I can use my move by points, have three of them starting at that corner and going up to there and that gives me the start of my block work. I need another piece of block on top I'm going to create a piece of block work on top here. I'm not exactly sure how big it should be. So what I'm going to do is to um, cheat a little bit by using my rough guide. So that's what I think is the right size. I'm going to use my clip tool. Let's clip this portion out of here and I'm just going to use my B key to see the rest of that and there it is. I could use my offset tool to offset that by about five millimeters which is nearly a quarter of an inch. Let's offset the original and there we are. So it just needs a hatch. So that's what I've got so far. I need to have some circles, so just draw some circles that you need. And then I'm going to use my tool, which is the double polygon tool, with a separation of about 12 millimeters, half an inch. And I'm going to create my reinforcing. It's going to go, it's going to start here, go up around that circle, down here, and back around there. So I need to draw it on that side. And I'm going to zoom in quite a lot to do this. So I'm going to touch that point there, come down here, zoom in, I'm going to touch that point there, go across. All the way down to here. So what that does is to create a polygon. Don't forget to use the reshape tool so that you can round these edges off. I've got some soil to go in. So I want to create an area here. This is going to have some P-metal in it. It's going to come up on an angle, something like this. And back to there. Don't forget the K key to close that off. And you can also use things like the split tool to split that off so that you can create two parts of that. Don't forget to close those. This has got one kind of hatch, which would be backfill. And it's got a drain. We need to have some soil that goes around that. So starting out here, I'm going to trace around. I'm just using my polyline tool. This is going to have soil hatch in it. I'm going to hide the edges of that. And don't forget about your line weights as well. Now that you've got your line weights, it's time to start putting in our dimensions. Use the unconstrained dimension. If you use the chain dimension, it's a lot quicker because you can put in the first dimension and then start putting in the subsequent chain dimensions. Remember, double click to finish. We've got a dimension from here to here. This time we don't want chain dimension, so let's turn that off. We've got a dimension here. Don't forget our radial dimension for that object. 
and now it's time to start putting in your notes. So now put in the rest of the notes that you need. And there's your detail. So how did you get on? If you struggled with this, my advice is to go back to the earlier chapters of the manual and practice. You've got to keep practicing and practicing. These are the tools that will really help use Vectorworks effectively. If you'd like to get hold of the Vectorworks Essentials Tutorial Manual, contact your local distributor or look at the main Vectorworks website, vectorworks.net. Thank you for watching. For the leader in Vectorworks training and manuals, visit learn.archoncad.com.